This is the eighth and final video of polymer detective series and in this video I'm going to show you how polymers are made, how they're disposed of, and how they're recycled. How are polymers made? Well, polymers are made from monomers and usually this is done under very high heat and pressure and sometimes catalysts are used to speed up the reaction. Catalysts are materials such as cadmium that are used to help link up these monomers together and catalysts can do this without themselves being affected. The pressures and temperatures, the pressures can reach um, thousands of pounds per square inch, just imaginably, unimaginably high pressures, and temperatures are in the hundreds of degrees in doing this. The raw material uh, for making these polymers comes from crude oil, which is the same raw material that's used to make gasoline for your car. Um, the monomers, uh, you know, link up one, one at a time and hundreds or thousands of monomers are in one chain and sometimes millions of monomers are in one chain. And of course there are millions and billions and perhaps trillions of, of individual polymer chains that make up a resin. Uh, the final form of these resins is, is usually in, in the form of pellets and powders and that's how, how it's sold to toy companies or container companies who then uh, heat up these polymers to very high temperatures and pressures again and use either molds or melt the plastic into sheets uh, to make various shapes and uh, various end products. Now we're going to talk about how polymers are disposed. Well there's only four ways that a plastic can be disposed of. We can put it in the trash in which case it ends up in a landfill like this one. This is not desirable because plastics take thousands of years to decompose. They kind of just sit there you can burn these plastics to get energy out of them. Uh, it's like burning oil because plastics, many plastics are like oil. They are derived from oils and they contain a lot of energy. In Europe this is very common but in the United States this is not so common. In Europe they burn plastics to make electricity. This in many believe is the best way to dispose of plastics because um, it doesn't have any chance of contaminating the groundwater and um, it, it is not wasted energy because we're taking the energy that we've taken to make those plastics and, and, and reusing them. Um, but one of the main concerns for incineration or burning of these plastics, however, is that they uh, pollute the air. But in actuality, new technologies now allow us to capture almost all the toxic fumes so that plastics burning plants are no more polluting than coal or gas burning plants in the United States. And the fuel is free because plastics would otherwise have to be disposed of somehow. You can biodegrade plastics. Now, this doesn't work for most synthetic plastics. Biodegradable plastics are a special class of plastics that are made from uh, natural materials. There are only a few companies doing it. Um, DuPont, for example, makes a biodegradable plastic that's made from corn. And there are a few other companies that make very specialized plastics. These plastics tend to be very expensive and they have generally not been used by, um, by manufacturers. Frito-Lay decided to use a biodegradable plastic on one of their Sunship products uh, not too long ago, but the bags made a lot of noise when people were handling them or opening them, and consumers complained. So Frito-Lay switched back to the regular uh, contaminating and bad plastics. They do things according to what their consumers want. Then, of course, there's recycling and we're going to talk about that now in a, little, in a little more detail. There are four processes that have to occur in order to recycle plastics. Here we're looking at what happens to your soda or water bottle. First you have to participate in collecting it. Very few consumers in fact do this. Only a small percentage of uh, plastic bottles are actually collected. Then after your garbage company collects the, the plastic, um, they have to somehow sort it. Often this is done by hand and this can be very inefficient, very costly and uh, also it's, uh, it's not very reliable because people make mistakes. For example, they might mix paper and plastic together or different types of plastics. For example, if you mix soda plastic with milk carton plastic, um, it's going to contaminate it because it's, it's going to degrade the properties of either one of those plastics by itself. Now, Presuming you can, you can collect and um, sort out the pure plastics, this plastic has to be processed. Process means that it has to be washed, purified, chopped up, and melted back into resin so that new bottles can be made. So usually you know, this, is, this is a picture of 
um, plastic bottles that has been sorted properly. Now this plastic is waiting to be processed. And after it's been purified, washed, chopped, and melted back into resin, it's, it's made, turned back into these bottles. So this entire process can be quite expensive. Um, the question is, do you think it's worth it? Do you think society thinks that it's worth it? Would you be willing to pay more for your soda to drink out of a recycled bottle? These are questions that we have to ask in order to, for us to, uh, to determine whether recycling is really worth our effort. Now I'd like to show you some recycling facts. These are some real recycling facts and um, something to ponder.